Do we have a show for them today? It, this is going to be incredible. This is probably two of my most favorite meals of all time. One is a for sure. new one that I discovered myself just a few months ago, and one is one that this amazing woman right here has been making for me special since I was a very little girl. Um, so I used to make my own baby food, yes. and my grandmother, my Nana, used to make this for us when we were kids because oh. we always had a garden. And she would just say, go out there, you know, get whatever's there. Green beans, zucchini, Swiss chard, a lot of the stuff that's in the winter cauliflower, garden right broccoli, now. Cauliflower, mm, broccoli, broccoli. Potatoes. Potatoes. Yes. And um, so she's going to read from the book because this is in the book, but she wants rose. Uh, I know. Cauliflower. I, I know. Cauliflower, I know. fresh from the garden. I know. Because, like, as I was getting more nutritiously minded, I will say, and incorporating more vegetables into my diet with vitamins and minerals and nutrients and enzymes and antioxidants and fiber and water, and they're just amazing, right? You know, we used to they're just so eat healing. like that when I was a kid, and then we got away from it. We talked well, last week about processed food. Yeah. So we got way far away. And can you imagine, all we did was go back to my childhood and my, my mother and my grandmother that we always had a garden. And so it's like what used to be old and like who wants to eat old food like that, coming full circle around that that's what we want right now and that's what you're talking about. Sort of, yes. I like the direction that you're going in and because I'm making a pizza, so I'm really like I want it to be, I want to be normal and I also want to have a ton of vegetables okay because so it heals my point. mind and my body is and that is so, that what we're hoping for is it healing I'm yes that is the direction <laughs> I'm going gosh darn it I'm gonna figure out a way there I need so, a lot more vegetables yes then, I know to heal that. we all do so that is why I'm making a cauliflower pizza crust pizza well we've got two recipes today so one recipe Rose is going to be doing, like an, yes, a I favorite, am. a pizza favorite, using cauliflower. Yes. But we've also got growing healthy kids from our own Mount Dabble Unified School District where we have this garden program going on. And they're going to show you how to make packaged top ramen into a healthy top ramen. Wait, what? Stop yes. it right now. We have three things happening today? We have a lot happening today. Oh my, okay, let's get okay. to it. Let's we have get, to get to it. To it. Okay. So you're gonna start yes. there. Yes. But I wanted to bring our guest in. But Can I, I'm gonna have him just sit here, because I want him, <laughs> well, you know how I am. I invite, you know, it's, it's okay, know, yeah, wonderful well, time I know. in the neighborhood. So yes. I wanna invite our guest in, okay. so that he can watch, Okay. right? So, um, Terrell, why don't you come on over here we're going to have you sit right here so we can be in dialogue. Absolutely. And uh, I met Terrell on Saturday. Be careful when you meet me. You may end up on the show the following week, right? <laughs> right. So Terrell has a business uh, right here in Concord. We're going to talk to you in a minute about it. But I want you to see what Rose and I are making right now. Okay. And um, see if any of this looks familiar from when you were a kid. Yeah, absolutely. OK. So Rose, take it away. Okay, so obviously we probably all know that you can buy riced cauliflower at the grocery store, meaning they've already chopped it up real fine for you. You can also bring it home, a whole head of cauliflower if you get one. And I thought we had one, but that's okay. I, no, no, no. Yes. I know, my little piece here. So you can get a whole head of cauliflower and either put it in your food processor or your blender, or actually what I really like to do is I like to use my cheese grater. Can we use <gasps> Romanesca? Romanesca. It's our new favorite oh, vegetable. And we know, I know, you know that it's half cauliflower and half broccoli, yeah. Romanesca, and it's got these yeah. little spikes. So it's in the garden right now, and so you can grate this up just like that. Go ahead, Rose. Okay, show okay. Them. So I'm gonna show you here that I'm just gonna take the cauliflower, the fresh cauliflower. And it's raw, it's raw. Fresh, it's not... raw cauliflower, that's right. And I'm just going to shred it here like this. And you can see it makes a beautiful, Beautiful. Isn't that nice? Yeah, yeah so nice. So the thing about real um, fresh, alive, and vibrant foods, vegetables and fruit, is that they have a lot of water in them. That's actually one of the things that make them so nutritionally vibrant 
for our bodies. We need water. Our body loves to be hydrated. And so when we're making a pizza crust, though, we don't necessarily want all of that water in there. It's a lot of moisture. So there's two different ways that you can take cauliflower, and after you've grated it, or even if you buy it at the store, you can pop it in the microwave to cook it a little bit, and then you can put it in a towel and wring out the water. You can also, which is a little bit of a new way of something that I've been doing lately, is I have just been taking a pan, throwing the cauliflower, the riced cauliflower in. You don't really need to get too much of a, a, of a shot on this here because I actually already did it because it needs to cool off too. But you take your riced cauliflower and you just put it in here and just on like a kind of like a medium simmer, you can go back and forth and really get out a lot of the moisture. You can also throw the cauliflower in chunks into the oven, get the moisture out that way. I also, um, I was telling Rose, when you're grating, if you use a little bit of parchment paper, you can actually pick it up off your cutting board and then go right over so to smart. your pan. So smart. So this is smart. what we learn in the restaurant business, this is right? Amazing. Cindy, this is why they pay you the big bucks. No waste. No, no waste. waste. <laughs> no waste. And then parchment paper is actually compostable. Compostable. Too. And so we've got our little bucket over here, and we want to remind Compost you bucket. all of your, your ends of everything can either go right into your yard, we're gonna talk about that a little mm -hmm. bit later, mm -hmm. or goes into your green bin. Yep. Because we want to reduce the waste that ends up in the landfill. Yes. Okay, so what are you, are you okay, next, Rose? Okay, so I, I did this a little bit earlier because I knew that it was gonna take you know a little bit of time to do this because this is now the riced cauliflower that I just sauteed. So I got a lot of the moisture out. And what I'm wanting it to do is to cool off a little bit because you know how like the steam comes up from something that's hot? That's good, that's the moisture leaving. So I'm just gonna stick it in here, and while Chef Cindy is showing you the manetta, well, that's what she calls it. What is it yeah. called in the book, though? Yeah, it's an Italian stew. Italian manetta, stew. Minestra. We're gonna minestra. let this cool down for We've a minute We've had that first. before, minestra, manetta. So um, I just call it Nana's Italian stew. So I'm gonna just cut up my, my Romanesco that I got from the garden. But I also have some kale, and you know I like to strip my kale. And then I've got some fresh Swiss chard here, and I like to use everything. So I'm just gonna cut this up. And this is layered, so you wanna go ahead and read the recipe from there. Yeah, I do. So you guys, I'm just gonna um, remind you of Chef Cindy's cookbook here. This is the Fat yes. Chance Cookbook. The plug. There the are plug. Uh, so many amazing recipes in here that we use on a regular basis. One of those recipes is this amazing, what she calls Nana's Italian Vegetable Stew. It is on page 280. By the way, this is the cauliflower leaves that Oof, I got from the garden. So yum. I use all, all the, greens the greens in mm. here. So, okay, what, so do you want me to read, read down here? Yeah, yeah, read okay. down there. So it's potatoes. Okay, so I wanna come over here yep. and I wanna lift this off. I already started the potatoes. Um, and you put them, you just cover, I just put the peel and everything. All of the vitamins and minerals are right Make sure you wash the potato, of course. They're right under the skin, so I include that, and these are all done. And I just covered this pot with water, put the potatoes on to boil, but you yep. don't have to do that ahead of time. And then you take your hardest vegetables and your cauliflower and a little bit of that Romanesca. You wanna hand that? Yes, yeah, so you have and just I in layer. chunks, though. Here, you put that in there, too. Yeah, I'm just gonna make it a little smaller. Wait, yeah. there you go. I know, I know, I know. And then I'm gonna do this, little broccoli. Mm. And you got that Romanesco. Romanesco? Yep. Do you want it chopped a little bit more? I think it's good. It's good. I'm gonna put this right on top. And you see I'm layering this. I've got the water covering the potatoes. Then I have my harder vegetables. Okay? And then I've got my softer. Okay, so, so potatoes, cauliflower, broccoli. This Zucchini, is all stuff from the green beans. during the summertime. Oh, amazing. Well, we don't have green beans right now, and we really don't but have zucchini. But you can. Zucchini, you can but, put them in. Okay, but you can get them at the grocery store. But this is like coming from your garden. Can I have my greens? You want all of this? I want oh, all of this. Hallelujah. And then I put oh the veggies, God, and you can just things. go like this. Yes, right woman, on the yes. top. Okay. Put it all in. A lot, in. a lot, a lot. Give me all that because Wait. this is going oh, to steam okay. up. Okay. Like you mean from the basket? You yeah, want all of this? Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> everything. Everything. You just Put it tear all it. In. You know, my grandmother would just, she'd just tear it up. 
Sometimes what my grandmother would do is she would take, and I did this too, you would take a pancetta, a little pancetta, which is Italian is bacon. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I got it. You saute it up with a little fresh garlic, okay. add okay. a little extra olive oil, and you can okay. put uh, cannelli beans white beans in there, okay. saute it. So okay. after this is all the stew's all done, uh, you're getting it, then you drain dude, off the why liquid. why fatty meat and green veggies so oh, good together? Oh gosh, I know. It's like a dream, right? It's a dream, it's a dream come true. So Absolutely. good. What did, you, what did you eat as a kid? Kind of, Share with us. Mm. I'm sorry? What did you eat as a kid? Um, not nothing near as healthy as this. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't you tell us, what's your business? Foods. What's your business? What are you doing now? Um, originally, I uh, graduated high school, became a chef at 18 years old. Uh, San Francisco, La Cordon Bleu. Uh huh. So, um, so you know what I got I'm acquainted talking about. with it real quick, though. Yeah. I did get acquainted with uh, good f uh, foods and veggies real quick. Uh huh. What's your favorite meal? Um, I would say ratatouille. It's very Ooh. similar to this. Uh huh. Uh, um, the no Italians potatoes, got it down. What yeah, can I say? You know, the Italians and the French. That whole Mediterranean area, yes. and it's growing. Yes, Everybody, absolutely. they would grow. My grandma, she'd have a bucket with basil growing. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just like wherever. It didn't matter if you lived in an apartment or outside. They had to have fresh things. Right. Tomatoes, right. basil, yes. oregano, yes. zucchini, greens, and everything fresh. Mm -hmm. They did not like packaged food. Right, exactly. They did not like packaged mm -hmm. food. They liked all the flavors. Have you traveled to Europe? Have you been to Italy? Yes, yes, yes. Is the, even the roadside, you oh, know, oh, the, they call fresh. them Autobahn. Oh, mm -hmm. oh my God, amazing. and big chunks of the uh, Romano cheese. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, my God, yes, there's yes. nothing like a big chunk of that. So um, this is all boiling now. I put everything in there, I turned it on to boil. I'm gonna let it just, you know, by the time your pizza's done, I'm gonna drain that for off. Sure. I'm gonna toss it all together. Now, when I'm doing it for a baby, all I add is a little bit of salt mm -hmm. and a little bit of cheese to that. Okay. That's it. I don't put the garlic and the olive oil and everything till they get a little older because it's not good. I believe, and we're going to have Dr. Um, Alan Green will be coming here at the end of the month, and he's going to talk about first foods and the importance of doing greens. Mm -hmm. You want to green your baby. You want to use, you know, mm -hmm. whole grains and vegetables, and you want to start them off with that as opposed to right. everybody was starting your kids off with applesauce and apple juice. Right. Come on, you're killing your kid. Growing healthy kids, right? A growing. <laughs> there you go. Growing, growing healthy, healthy kids. kids. Growing healthy kids. Growing healthy kids. Growing healthy kids. <laughs> So, All right, so let um, me put this together okay, before you we put get that off together. on a tangent because right. this needs to cook for about Did 18 to 20 tangents? minutes. No. No. We're done. So yeah. one head what of cauliflower think? typically is going to cook down, because remember we sauteed it. Remember? Yeah, it was a little saute, a quick saute. And we cooled it, and it cooks down to about two cups of uh, veggie. So I'm going to put one egg in here. So that's your protein. This is some protein. I'm also okay. gonna do some cheese, which is also protein. So let me rephrase that. It's the two cups of cauliflower cooks down. Yes. The whole cauliflower cooks down, yeah. Yes. And then I'm gonna put some cheese, about two ounces. We'll post the recipe ounces. later on. You can always find this yeah, on our website. that's true. And then I'm gonna use, so you can do it separate if you want to, but I just found this. Oh, it's, it's, the little lid is on still. Okay, oh, that was super easy, yay. Okay, so this is called <laughs> A Bodo seasoning. Let me just tell you the magic that's in here. Sea salt, organic garlic, organic onion, organic black pepper, organic oregano, organic bay leaf, organic, organic turmeric. Oh, yes. Rose, you had me at organic. You, I know, right? <laughs> I mean, did you have to say all the organics? Yeah, it's a little obnoxious, but that's okay. Okay, so this is everything that I want in here. Now, listen. You do not need to put any seasoning in your crust if you don't want to. If you like all of your seasoning and your flavor to be on top, that's totally fine. I really like to have the seasoning inside, so I'm gonna put about a teaspoon and a half. Would you say that was about a teaspoon and a half? Mm -hmm. Yes? Okay, in here, and then we're just gonna mix it up. Right, we're just gonna mix it up, and now, the egg and the cheese, this is going to make the cauliflower crust stick together, right? So that it doesn't all just flake apart. 
I oh, like really? that rose. I know. I like that. I know. Did you see that? I know. Yeah. I know. Isn't that beautiful? To yeah. And don't be afraid to be creative. Exactly. You know? You could put anything in there. You can chop up, you could do bell peppers, you uh, could put some rosemary. Rosemary. Mm. Oh, give me the chef. Give me the chef there. You watch Now you're him thinking, like, you're thinking. And isn't that easy? And you know, using things from the garden that you go straight from the garden into the house, it doesn't have all the plastic in the wrapping. Right. So the more the closer you are to the source, the less packaging and the better it is for you too. Right. And the environment. And the environment. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So you can see I, I had it in a little like ball just right in the middle and I'm patting it down. And what I want to do is I want to come around the sides so that it's not too thin, right? And you want to squish out the middle so that it gets nice and, there's and no water cooked there. all I the way through. Anything. That looks it's good. It's holding together really nice. Yeah. Yeah. And then you just want to bring it in because otherwise it will get a little like burnt on the edges, which is kind of fine if that's how you like it. But you just kind of tuck it in a little bit. Ooh, that's tuck got a lot of cheese. Tuck in it in. It. Yeah, we got a lot of cheese. So do you you bake it and dry it out first, and then you put the sauce on it later? Yes, exactly. So I'm going to put this in the oven for about 18 to 20 to 20 minutes, kind of depending on your oven, at about 415, 450. Again, kind of depending on your oven. And then we're going to bring it out. We're going to check it out, see how it is, and then we're going to put the sauce and the veggies on it. Okay. Look good? Looking good. Okay, okay, all right, we're going in. Goes in there. You might want to put it on the bottom too because the heat comes from the bottom. Do I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Like anything with a crust, like quiche or pies or anything, you want to put them on the bottom yeah. so that the crust can crispen up. Yep. And then when you want to brown it, you move it to the top, yeah, right? Yeah, broil. Yeah, mm. there you go, you broil it from the top. So tell me what is one of your favorite things, like, we're talking about to instead of, you know, people like to eat pizza, you can do a cauliflower pizza as a healthier way. Yeah. We've got our, you know, healthy kids mm -hmm. in uh, showing how to do the, um, the top ramen, you know, that you get in the package because they like those noodles and such. Right. That's so, what I grew up on. That's what, you asked yes. me earlier, that's what I grew up on. The top ramen, right. yes. And um, a lot of kids, a lot of families, they feel like, um, they don't have enough money, mm -hmm. so they buy the top ramen thinking that it fit, that it fills up their child. Absolutely. Or for themselves in a sports drink, and we've been, you know, we're hammering our coaches about moving away from sports drinks and processed food, mm -hmm. because what is cheap today is expensive tomorrow. Exactly. So our medical has gone up way faster than food. We used to spend 17% of our our paycheck on food, mm -hmm. and now it's 7%. They go, whoa, we brought down the cost of food. But medical now is 25%. Right. And you know, I have you know, Kaiser in the school district, and I think the school district is paying twelve or $1,500 a month for us to have Kaiser. Mm -hmm. And when I first started my business 40 years ago, Kaiser, complete Kaiser, was $57 per person. Wow. Yeah. So you can see, I don't think food's got up that much, right, right. you know? Yeah. So what is one of your favorite things that you like to make? And um, when I, I'll, you know, I'm gonna back up just a minute because when we met on Saturday when you came in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please do tell this story. Oh, this what is What do you so mean great. you just met this man on Saturday and now he's <laughs> well, here? I love that you're here. Because he said <laughs> well, something. Well, what does that even mean? This you is said so something to me she that touched wild. my heart. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and I wanted to have, you know, there's a lot of, we know that there's a lot of racial, you know, profiling and a lot of, you know, everybody's talking about, you know, um, what we can do to make it different. And you said something that just touched me, and maybe you could speak to it again. What food does? Um, well, just to start off, um, I grew up, you know, one of the people of the have-nots, um, so I wasn't really educated about food. Um, got into the culinary um, industry, and that bridged the gap in life for me. It gave me a way to connect to people that weren't in my demographic. Um, it also educated me about how people travel with food, uh, people's different culture, or why they ate what they ate. Um, also, um, it allowed me to travel around the world and to just connect with people and see what they were eating, what their food were like, and compare it to the food that we have here. And that 
pretty was pretty much was my uh, my experience, but also it showed me that we're all just people, right? Uh, we all need to eat. We have a lot more in common than we don't, right? Right. Um, food is, you know, when you're having a meeting, coffee or you know some type of uh, snack. Um, when you're doing business and you're having dinner parties and things of that nature, right. like these things bring people together, brings cultures together. Um, Sometimes you feel like you don't have things to talk about with other people, but we have so much in common in food. It's like, it gets us excited, right? It's a mm. big part of who we are, and like you were saying. Um, it's, it's a medicine for us in more than one way, mm, right? Yes. We take it in, and also it, it brings us together. It's medicine for the people. Mm -hmm. that, that's go. my belief. That's and my you connection. Know, I've heard it said, you know, let food be your medicine yeah. and medicine be your food. Absolutely, absolutely. But it's a cultural thing. Yes. You know, yes. we we learn about each other when we sit and have a cup of tea mm -hmm. or a cup of coffee yes. or a vegetable or share a recipe because I'm looking at that food and how it's going to make me feel right. too, you mm -hmm. know? And when, you know, I've traveled all yeah. over the world and it was you know, seeing what people have on their table and then sharing that, yes. it's like, you are so right. Mm -hmm. it, it comes together. Yeah. Um, I feel like processed food has made us more of a disconnected, angry culture because yeah. when kids are eating, and I know what you have taught, and, you know, Rose teaches foods and nutrition here, and she did, you know, foods and moods mm -hmm. and maybe project. you I'm gonna so check cool. my veggies will you tell him a little bit what happened about you know and yeah about foods and moods and you know as I was saying this if remember the Twinkie defense you I don't know if you're you guys are too young oh I remember the Twinkie defense when that he said obnoxious. the reason why I killed this man is I you know had um, too much Harvey sugar Mel, I had too many I had Twinkies, too many wow. Twinkies and yeah. I was on the edge of it, and they used it. That was Harvey Milk that was shot by, wow. by Dan White, and they called it the Twinkie defense. So, you know, <laughs> it's like, you know, that, that is, yeah. if nothing else, it'll tell you what processed and food that is not vibrant and alive and, and messes with your body, man. Messes, messes with your brain. Messes with the body. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to stir my veggies. Yeah, absolutely. C continue to talk about, tell them about the foods. And, uh, yeah, it was a really cool project that I had my students do where um, they got into groups and they um, researched a, a different mood, right? Of course, you know, first we talked about different moods. You know, there's, you know, of course, happy, sad, angry, tired, depressed, there, you know, anxiety. There's a whole bunch of, of different ones. So, of course, we focus on the more. Can I, can I just say something? I'm of sorry. Of course. Um, when you want to check with your veggies, well, you know, you just stick your knife in, and if it goes really soft, yeah. they're done. My stew is done. Nana's stew so is quick. done. So, so quick. quick. And I started the potatoes. So yeah. what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour this off, and then I'm going to bring it back over here and let it just kind of cool down. And then I'm going to add my cheese, my olive oil, and a little bit of salt. Bam, done. And it'll look so good next to what you got. So, so um, good. I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to take my little towel. Can you, is there too much steam or can you see that? And how vibrantly green. Yeah. Can you see that? Yeah. Oh, it oh, looks magical, green. Mom. Oh, this is Very magical. nice. So I'm going to take it and oh go my like gosh. this. You see? And you can see the layers of everything. Yeah, it's so beautiful. This is where I'm, oh, uh, the bell. The bell. <laughs> raise your hand, ask a question. Mama always said, sit in the front row and raise your hand. Yep. That was what she said. Mm -hmm. Be a good student. Yes. And engage. So um, do you want to do this now and have them focus on the food here as you add everything in there? I guess we could, you know, then yeah, it'll, it'll it's OK. Like, OK. So we got some seasoning. So I'm going to come over here, yep. if that works. And um, the first thing I do is I add the oil. So you want to grab the oil, Rose? Yes, ma'am. So Rose is in charge of oil. Doesn't am, this look Am delicious? I just pouring in? You're going to do, oh, like, yeah, that's good. OK. okay. That was like so a quarter cup. So I was saying you cup? could also saute off garlic. Sure, yes. And mm, put that, mm -hmm. you know, pancetta, little mm. pancetta in here would be wonderful. And you can see how it's just kind of like, oh my gosh. Mm. 
Isn't that good? So, okay, can I go with the salt, please? Can I go with the salt? Yes, okay, so I got a teaspoon. This is half a teaspoon. Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. Half keep a teaspoon. Going, keep going. Okay, so now we got a whole teaspoon. Yeah, I is think good? we're good. Yeah. Okay, now, all right, now we're going to put our protein in. So you have your starch, which is the potato, mm -hmm. you have all your veggies. And now I'm going so with the cheese. As you are lifting, I think you want to lift that way. Oh, I'm lifting Perfect. this way. So we've got some Parmesan cheese. Sprinkle yeah, that puppy. Sprinkle it in. What is this, a half a cup? Yeah. Quarter cup? Half yeah. A cup? Yeah. Oh, this is so good. Mm -hmm. So we're going to need to get a four. Um, what after? is this? Am I putting this in? Oh, uh, that's oregano. Nah, I'm yeah. going, I'm, I'm not what, doing oregano. Oh, doobie booby, my organic yes, good seasoning. Um, okay. You know what, okay. Rose, you okay. do it. Okay, this is what's happening here. So you can see how good this would be for a baby. Yeah. You just stick it in your blender. But you wouldn't put the adobe no, in here. No, not all the garlic. As they get old. Yeah. But you know, if you oh, want, ha, ha, yeah. Ha, ha, ha. Okay, <laughs> so look at that and you just, that's it, that's it, that's it. I, Rose, I need, yep. give me that wooden spoon because yep. the one with the holes I'm no going to want, yes, this one right here, this is clean. So if you could just a little potato. Cool it I off want you to try this. Oh yeah. Tell me it needs more salt, it needs whatever it needs. I know it's I really warm. Kitchen style on the I'm hand gonna, hand you or... just whatever way you want it. I'm just no, gonna. It's your spoon, man. It's your spoon. spoon. Yeah, right, yes, right, right. right. No, you just do you there. <laughs> and you tell me what does it need? That's a lot going on there. Mm. Kind of hot, but. It's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't this? It has all the elements. <laughs> all the, the elements. The texture is really the nice. The texture, yeah. isn't that nice with the cheese? <laughs> yeah. That is like, we got it going on. Okay, and I really like to have this like served at room temperature or even cold and put it on a crusty piece of French bread. Mm. We didn't want to have that lid on because all the moisture is gonna make it all m more I'm gonna yeah. leave it like this. You're yeah. right. I'm gonna stick it here. So I'm done with my part. Okay. Does it get easier than that? No. It does not get easier. Little water. You layer all the veggies. You stir it up. You That's add it. some cheese, some seasoning, some mm -hmm. salt, some oil. You know that is not even very expensive. Ooh. Look at her. She's going on. And it's you know people say it's too well, it's expensive. Well, like, you know, it's to like eat what warms my heart. It like reminds yeah. me of my childhood, my yeah. mom, and how she used to cook amazing things for me. And I just love I still you so do. Much. We still do. We still I know. do. I know. So cute. Okay. So I'm gonna um, check my pizza. I wanted to, you know, look. We got the whole big mess going on here. She's checking her pizza. Now this is what she's gonna put on her pizza over here. Rose. Yes. So a little bit earlier, we were preparing for you, and I roasted up a couple of veggies. I'm just going to grab them from over here. So this is like super simple, right? I just grabbed some broccoli, some onions, some yellow zucchini, green zucchini, some bell peppers, and I just tossed them on here, threw them in the oven at mm -hmm. like 400 for what, 10 minutes? 10, 12 yeah. minutes? Yeah. So these veggies, these roasted veggies, are ready to go on the pizza when the pizza is done. So it's still cooking. It's still so cooking maybe I'll finish my mood and food oh, yeah. conversation food. when we're talking about mood and food. Yes. So can I just ask one question? Of course, you do that? of course. Have you, can. you ever had a bad mood because of the food that you ate? Have you been able to um, identify the two? That's a that's a great question. You know. You do notice, like, a lot of times we have quick breakfasts, right? So it'll be like sugary, donut. right? Donut. Mm -hmm. uh, my favorite is French toast. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that was the first thing I ever learned how to make was French toast. <laughs> but you feel like how those things kind of make you feel sluggish and slow you down versus having a banana or an apple. You kind of get perkied up, you know, when you're getting that, that good source of sugars and stuff. Oh, right. man, that's so yeah, real. Yeah, French toast. And you know what I see too is a lot of times people will have a muffin mm -hmm. and a cup of coffee. Right. And so the caffeine in the coffee kind of covers up the high and the crash right. from the sugar. Exactly. And exactly. then what you want is you want more caffeine. Mm -hmm. Or and I see the kids come into school all the time. They've got their Starbucks mm. sugar drink yeah. with the caffeine. So they've got the caffeine, the sugar, and the muffin mm -hmm. or the croissant. And it's oh my gosh, parents, please. Please, we beg of you, yes. make sure that your kids eat scrambled eggs 
on whole wheat toast and send them off with something good in the morning. Right. Just scrambled eggs and those potatoes. Or, it's or quick. The, it's quick, it's easy. easy, oatmeal, and try not to put the sugar on there. Next week, we've got Dr. Robert Lustig coming from UCSF and he's talking about, he, we wrote the Fat Chance Cookbook together, mm -hmm. about the impact of sugar and how we're just dosing our kids' livers. Right. Yeah, right. because sugar is the child's alcohol. Right, yeah. Yeah, Definitely. we're poisoning our kids. And I also have seen this, Rose, mm -hmm. over at when I've gone over to Rossmore with the retirement community. They're doing the same thing the kids are doing. They're having sweet things in the morning for breakfast, right. and they're eating a lot of processed food because they just don't have time. Well, by to that make time, all it's, this. it's habit as well. Oh, yeah. Definitely. You know, like so yeah. often we hear people say, oh, well, they're kids. Oh, they'll right. grow out of it. Oh, it's not really a big deal, they'll burn it off. Right. And it's like, well, yeah, I get that, but then what happens is that you create a habit. Yes. Mm -hmm. And yes. then when you are a teenager or you're an adult, a young adult, or you're in your 30s or your 40s, and you're like, oh, I'm trying to break a habit that I've been doing for 40 right. years. Right. Like, that's a rough one. So growing healthy kids is that's like, a rough if you start one. Makes young, it so much easier, yes. Yes, you already programmed that way. Yes, right? yes. And not only that, these companies have scientists who work day and night to make you addicted <laughs> to these things. You are, you yes. are addicted chemically to these things, right? yeah. to the chemical things in the yeah. food, the processed And foods. it's not just the sugar, it's the chemicals. Right. I try to expose what's in sports drinks to our kids and tell them, read what it says in label. What is natural flavoring? Right. What, are, what makes it the color blue? What keeps it from separating out, right. you know? Right. And those emulsifiers are what keep it together. But emulsifier is also a detergent. Mm -hmm. That's what emulsifiers are. Right. And detergents take the top layer away. So if you're drinking a sports drink and it has emulsifiers in it, it's taking the lining of your gut. Mm -hmm. And they are believing, and Lustig is gonna talk about, Dr. Lustig will talk about this next week, that they think that the emulsifiers, the sports drinks and the sodas have taken away the lining of the gut. So mm -hmm. it becomes permeable. So things can pass through. It, are our allergies, food allergies, gluten and all this, is it because the food has changed mm -hmm. or because we changed our body's ability to fight it off? Right. Exactly. So we'll be talking, I mean, and gosh, you know. That's where the sickness is coming That's from, where right? the sickness is. Why are we so sick? Mm -hmm. So we're going to be talking about that. But you know what's great is having chefs. You need, one of the things that we state here, and we're going to get back to foods and moods, is that you cannot take responsibility for your health unless you have the education, Definitely. the skills, and accessibility to this. Right. Yes. And our school district is bringing back culinary and having these growing healthy kids is having these educators outside in the, in the middle school and the elementary schools where they're growing um, the vegetables taking the kids in the garden, having to make a salad or roasting or doing veggies. Mm -hmm. So they're showing them that they, here's the education from the garden, why it's important growing healthy kids, why it's important to have a garden, how to recycle, how to handle the waste. Right, yes, we, and then, you know, they, I heard over at Cambridge and Meadow Homes that whatever the kids are growing, they give it away. They're having their own farmer's market so that the community can come and pick it up. Well, if I teach you and your kids, or you're there helping me, not that I'm gonna lean on you, <laughs> but all hands on deck. Yeah, yes. Definitely. All hands on deck. Yes. If you know how to chop, or you know how to grow, or you know how to recycle, we should be teaching the children. And then the children can go home and they can teach well, their parents, hello. their grandparents, and help. I have been trying to get my son to eat pesto for years, literally years. He's now in a cooking class at his junior high that he goes to. They made pesto. He He's came home it. and he was like, Mom, pesto's so awesome. I just really love it. Because he was making it with his friends. Right, he made right, it yes. himself right. and his friends peer were there. Peer pressure. Peer pressure. Peer, so like peer, in the school, yes. Yeah, cooking classes in the schools are, are yes. miraculous. When we get back to the foods and mood, I'm gonna tell you a story about yeah, that as well. We're back on foods and mood. I know, I know, no, no. But now I actually am more interested in the pizza. <laughs> oh, now you she's know? doing the pizza. Now I'm more interested well, in the we'll pizza. we'll talk about foods and moods, okay? okay? okay. Oh what's my up? God. 
What's oh. up now? We love look food. at the color. Do you look at you that? See that? <laughs> Because these sugars that are naturally yes. occurring mm -hmm. in the cauliflower have caramelized. Yes. Oh, it looks so amazing. do you, okay, I know. It looks I'm like a, cheesy palenza. Oh, che it it does. Does. cheesy oh, palenza. That was way too hot. <laughs> that was too hot. That is gorgeous. Okay, dress. okay, now we're it's gonna not, let her do her magic. It's not totally done yet, right? So I took it out just a little bit early, but you can see that it does. Right? It holds Ooh. together. Uh, uh, yes. Vito. Right? Vito. It's not crunchy Vito, Vito, but I'll tell you, good. you double the cheese and you let it cook for a little bit longer, you'll get your crunchy pizza crust. <laughs> All right. I know. So what we're going to do now is we're going okay, to. What you do, I want to yes. tell you for the sauce. Yes, yes. She, okay. she made this. She I just went this. like this. So simple. And, and because it's sauce. so simple. OK. Right, what was it? You take <laughs> tomato sauce and you add um, tomato paste to it and you mix it up and I would say two to one two tomato to one on the tomato sauce I mean on the on paste. the paste yeah. and then a little bit of oregano yeah. that's it easy peasy that's it. easy peasy all right because you want all of those flavors mm. I mean my mouth is watering I mean I'm just <laughs> do you just see it okay okay food is so fabulous it's so Absolutely, much fun yes. it's so much fun yes. And of course, you know, I mean, if it was just me at home, I would just go, <laughs> <laughs> right? It would be this She's like giant giant press <laughs> hole. That's the but art yes, of it. I, the art, the art, oh, yeah. see, there's art in here. <laughs> absolutely. Art in the palette. Yes. Art absolutely. in the palette. Uh, but and, yes, and for you, I'm making that's it fancy. What universally, when you go to someone's home and they cook for you, they are going to, it's their art, mm -hmm. it's their passion. Art and passion in the food. Absolutely. I've been to the Middle East and they've made the most amazing rice with saffron and Ooh, then they put their, yes. um, you know what I'm talking about? Like the raisins. Oh, and the raisins and, and they put everything in there. And it's not raisins that have been sugar coated. Mm -hmm. It's like they pull the grapes off the vine and what mm. fell, they put on a tray and they put it on their roof to dry it out. Yeah. And it has that, you know what I'm talking about? Yes. We're both just going. Very uh, oh, aromatic. Aromatic. Yes, aromatic. Yes, yes. And the water, the water in New York, you cannot get pizza dough the way that you get it anywhere else because of the water. Right. It's the water, it's the air, it's yeah. the soil, it's the hands. It's, it's like the sourdough everything. bread here, right? Oh, yeah. And, and, and you know, the antithesis of that is processed food <laughs> mm -hmm. because they want everything to be the same everywhere. Yeah. So that if you get a McDonald's hamburger in, you know, in, in Italy, oh, and that's where the whole slow food movement started. In Italy, it should be the same as if you got it in Texas or New York. They want everything to taste everything the same. same. Okay, so I'm just gonna and it pop can't be in like here. That. Look at that. So that we can focus that? on this beautiful. beautiful. And of course, you can use um, shredded mozzarella. We just had these cute little balls of mozzarella, so that's what I put on and here. Buffalo mozzarella. Buffalo you know mozzarella. That's you can take. use whatever you want, and, and I'm going to throw it back in the oven. Some, oh, wait, wait. Let's put a little oregano, dried okay. oregano, okay. on the top, okay. just because for you can fun. for it fun. Looks nice. it, looks it looks so good. So nice. Is that so good? So good. So we're going to let this bake in the oven. Meanwhile. What we're going to do is we're going to cut. Are you going to stick around to have a piece of pizza, or do you got to go? Um, I'll stick around. You go, how can you leave that? <laughs> you can't leave that. Well, now that so I can see it. So we are going to um, right now go to Growing Healthy Kids. Submitted a little um, a little cooking cooking video for us. By the way, if you want to make something at home and share with us from your school or what you do at your house, you know what? My website is. Cindy Gershon. Dot com. Dot com. That's Submit it. to us what you're doing so that we can share with the community. Okay, take it away. Hello, everybody. My name is Ladybug Laney, and I'm here today to teach you a simple recipe for a homemade cup of noodles. Many kids like store-bought cup of noodles because they're a quick snack that can be ready in three minutes. Our homemade cup of noodles can be ready just as quickly, but they are full of fresh green vegetables that will help keep you from getting sick. And we are making them in a glass jar, which is much better for our earth.
make sure you have a child-friendly knife on hand, such as this one, for safe chopping. And for kids, you're going to want to use a claw and saw method to hold your vegetable in place and chop it safely. Form a claw with your left hand and pick up your knife. Putting your claw right next to your knife, you're going to make a gentle sawing motion with your right hand. Go ahead and discard the end of the bok choy for your compost pile and continue sawing your bok choy so that you have nice bite-sized pieces. One large leaf of bok choy should leave you with about one cup, which is what you need for this recipe. Repeat this step with your green onions, claw and saw, discarding the ends of the green onions into your compost pile and slicing them up into thin bite-sized slivers. on nice and tight. And set your timer for three to five minutes. and put them in the fridge. They will last for three days and all you have to do is add the boiling water when you're ready to eat. Make sure to subscribe to our MDUSD Garden Education channel for more recipes and cooking ideas. And if you choose to swap ingredients, we'd love for you to post in the comments your favorite version of a healthy homemade cup of noodles. Wasn't that great? <laughs> totally awesome. I love it. All you have to do is like boil the water. I mean, it was simple. You put the bouillon cube, you put it into a mason jar. Yep. Simple. Whatever vegetables you have, spinach, cabbage. Look at this. This is from the garden. Ca so cool. Again, cabbage patch kids. <laughs> so, so when cute. I pulled this out of the garden, this yeah. came out yesterday. All I could think of was I'm going to dunk it yeah. and wash it and then just drizzle olive oil, and then maybe heat up some garlic in that oil. And can you see roasted garlic? Yeah. And then you just pull off the leaves yeah. and you eat it. You know, mm -hmm. is that delicious? You can like like the whole salad. This would be my salad it tonight. Yeah. It's just, I just can't get over how amazing the garden is. And in that top ramen, that, that take on a top ramen, what is so bad about top ramen is all the chemicals that they put into right. it. And it's got no vegetables. All it is is yeah. starch yeah. and salt. Sodium, yeah. Starch yeah. and sodium. Yeah. You need to get a little fiber, little vitamins, little minerals, and then we're and, like, all right, now yeah. we're rocking. And, yeah. and you know what? Boil, and if you have, if you've got chicken mm -hmm. in uh, a big chicken, save the broth. Yeah, Save absolutely. the broth. Use that instead of the bouillon cubes. Throw your noodles in there. Chop up these things. Mm -hmm. Set them in. Put the lid on top. And it, it just. Yeah. Or even a carcass. Just throw yes. the carcass, add water, something that you would normally throw away. Uh -huh. Throw the carcass, add water, let it simmer for about yeah. an hour or two. Yeah. And then drain it, now yeah. you got some. Put chicken. Yeah. It is so easy. It is so easy. 
And I'm, you know, I'm, I would love to see more teachers do this in their classroom. I mean, they did this right from the, you saw it right from the garden, and the teachers could do it right in the classroom, mm. which makes it really simple, mm. really simple. And these are the ideas that we're sharing. But I was hoping maybe you could talk about, you know, before I so rudely interrupted her, into um, foods and moods. And just some of the things that the kids shared with you. So it was so awesome. So they did a little bit of research on uh, whatever their mood was, they got to pick it. Most of them picked um, either tired or depressed or anxious, right? Those were the kind of the, the top Stay picks. Great for kids. No, yeah, know. right, exactly. So they're like, yeah, I relate to those. And it was really cool because in their research, all of them you know, discovered and reported, they're like, oh, this is actually normal, right? Being a human being is wild. Right. <laughs> it's emotional, there's ups and downs. We often feel like we're the only ones that are suffering from different kinds of emotions, but really, like the range of emotions is normal to go through, especially when you're a teenager. So that was really powerful and important for, for, for me as I, and you could see like their light kind of come on. They're like, oh, and it's, you know, this is a normal state. And then, of course, always because I teach foods and nutrition, I want them to tie back and do some research on what foods either enhance that mood or, or you know, and make it better, and what moods add to that mood and make it worse. And what was so cool is almost every single group had salmon, right? Because they had to, they had to then choose a meal. Right, that was foods that are going to enhance that meal and make it better, to make the, be the, the mood better. And almost every single one of them chose various kinds of veggies, of course, fruit and salmon. What was so cool is because we do foods and nutrition, then the next step is, cool, let's go make that in the kitchen. None of them had ever had salmon before. Right. right. <laughs> but they researched. It was so cool, but they researched it. So they, now they have like the information and the knowledge, and then they presented it, and they saw other people do it, and then they're like, salmon, salmon, salmon. So then we made stuffed salmon, where they took the cheese oh, and the yes. spinach, and they stuffed it in the salmon, and they baked it. It was amazing, and they all tried it. And what they were saying was, oh my god, that's pretty good. Who <laughs> <laughs> thought? And then they also, in their minds, they know because they did their own research that that is helping them. Yes. It's giving them the vitamins and the minerals and the nutrients mm -hmm. and the enzymes and all the wonderful you things that they need. That you need in your brain right. to kind of fat. counteract yeah. all those yeah. nacho chips. What kind of chips are they eating now? That who have? cares? Don't even, don't even say the like word. It's like their don't fingers even are say the like. Word. <laughs> I know, it was not good. I know. Did you eat all that stuff too? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, come on. Still no, we tried, we had to try. Um, I'm not going to answer that. Ah. <laughs> Ooh, dang. Man, we were oh, talking. Oh, my God. That is go I, I got to try this. I know real. what is I going right. on oh, right now. Oh, this looks so. My mouth is watering. It oh, looks so good. Oh, yes. Look at that. Now we're going to pull this right off of here. You ready, Ro? Yeah. That's why I always like to work with parchment paper. And then you just take your knife and you can just loosen Where is it that right up there. Knife? That there knife. Go. Okay, but I'm also going to move this into that glass bowl. Are you oh, ready? Hello. Okay. Hello. You ready? I think so. Okay. Can I help you? Can you help this me? This is like a this feels like a two person job. It, it is, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one watches. The uh, other two person one. or one chef Cindy. Either yes. way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because nice. by the time the, you know, in class, I've been teaching for twelve years here, I go, can someone help me? But and then by the time they get by there. By the time we get it's there. It's just like it's She's just like it. in the classroom when we have those phones that you can call. In case there's an emergency, use the phone in your room and someone will come help you. I, so, I mean, I, by the time they come to help you, if it was a real emergency, it's way too late. That's it. Ain't that the truth? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Ain't that the truth? It is. So, just, I heard what you were saying about taking it from the bottom, but uh, with a knife, but is this what you're talking about? That's it. Maybe? That's did it. we need. Whoa! Aww. Oh, now we need a knife. Man, nice. come on. Snap. All right, all right, we're good. Okay. We got a little water. And that's easier. why you don't wear sandals. You don't wear sandals no, in the kitchen. No, I am not wearing sandals. Right knife, 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 okay. knife behind you. So what I would do is I would point down. Okay. And I slowly okay. 
do this, mm -hmm. and I go around it. Is that gorgeous? Yes, all of it is. Oh, uh, yeah. So, and you just kind of go around. You know, we got a film crew here. I know. And See, this okay. film crew is going, mm, do I get to try that? Well, so we're live. So this is actually a really good thing to notice here, mm -hmm. is that I should have turned down the heat of the oven a little bit oh, no, but so I, that it I'll didn't get, this part right you right like there. the crunchy oh, part? I love it. <laughs> Vito, crunchy. Because the middle is going to be a little bit too soft and the out is going to be a little bit too burnt. So really what uh, I should have okay. done it because it was at 450, I should have turned it back down to 400 okay. and left it in there for the full 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. But you know, what are you gonna do? I that's think good. that is amazing. I Isn't wouldn't take amazing? it any other way. Uh -uh. You want some of those different textures, right? Yeah. Right? You want some oh, yeah. soft, some and crispy. As it cools, yeah. It solidifies. Mm. You know that. Definitely. Everything. It makes it easier too to like deal with as it cools. Yeah, down. yeah, yeah. But isn't that an amazing yeah. meal? It's beautiful. It's mm. beautiful. I would just fold it in half and kind of eat it like a taco. <laughs> <laughs> I like your style. You're uh -huh. about to. You're about to do that. And in you know, that is, that is what's so amazing. I teach, um, Rose teaches the foods and nutrition, and I teach the history and the culinary um, part. And I have kids research where their families originally came from mm -hmm. and what were the foods that they brought with them. Because American food is, it's the sad diet, the sad American diet, Aww. because... A lot of it was different cultures coming together. Yeah. But if you go back to the village that my grandparents came from in Italy, you know, the olive oils, they did not eat a lot of dairy mm -hmm. because they were Southern Italian. They ate a lot of fish, they had tomatoes, they grew right. things. So Northern Italian, they ate more of the creams and, and, and that's Alfredo. I never had Alfredo as a kid. I mean, are you kidding? <laughs> it was like, no. And my grandmother would never let us have polenta because that's, that's the poor people's food. That's yeah. what they ate. We didn't eat polenta. Exactly. Oh, that's hilarious. My, my mom gave me polenta. Because? And I loved it. so delicious. <laughs> and so I got to thank, I got to thank Alice Waters mm -hmm. for she her going back mm -hmm. to Italy. She would, when I first started my restaurant 40 years ago, we were like all in the same kind of group. And she would shut her restaurant down for two weeks during the summer and take most of her staff with her. And they would be in Italy. And that's where Carlo Petrini and the slow food movement. Right. And the history of, and that's one of my heroes that I teach the kids in class, Carlo Petrini. It's, they were going to put a McDonald's, I don't know if you know the story, in Rome. And the local farmer said, you're not going to do to Italy what you've done to America. Right. We're going to lose jobs. Our young people will then want to eat McDonald's. So they brought their tractors in, and they were going to rebel. Mm -hmm. They protest, you know. <laughs> that's, that's what they do. They, get they were so they smart. They were so smart. And Carlo Petrini was a, a, a journalist mm -hmm. like Michael Pollan at UC Berkeley. He was a journalist at the local college, and he said, hey, you know, if you're against fast food, then you must be for slow food. Right. So that's where, you know, and now it's like around the world, people are saying, don't take my culture away. Mm. Don't take. And I've taught the kids when, when, when people came, the, the slaves came from Africa, they were not eating chitlins. They were vegetarian. A lot of them were Muslim. And a lot of them, they ate greens and what they grew and beans and very small amount of meat. But for some reason, you think soul food really is the food from the plantations. Mm. And it has nothing to do. And if you were to take the diet of someone from Nigeria against someone whose family came from Nigeria here and feed them what they are eating in Nigeria to the people here and feed them in Nigeria, their health would sw would shift, yeah, and so yeah. drastically. Mm -hmm. So that happens worldwide for everyone, you know. Right. So uh, it's the sad American diet, sad to say, but we can change it if we can. Right. So education. that's what education, mm -hmm. and like you said, coming and sharing a meal yeah. and your palate change, and you know the the program that we have at the Mount Devil School, growing healthy kids. All those kids are from a lot of immigrant kids coming yeah. together and sharing a meal and learning to grow 
and getting their health. But you've got, in order to take responsibility, you need to understand where you come from, Absolutely. what makes you a strong, healthy person, and don't get caught up in that. Thank you so much. Okay, we gotta try yeah, this. Yeah, you gotta try it. Uh, I mean, you know, it. you are a guest. We're putting you on the spot to Absolutely. try the cauliflower. Yeah, you might, okay. you might need no, a little. No, no, see if you can hold it up. Okay, you gotta uh, show the whole thing. I'm getting rid of the cabbage patch kid. Uh, oh, oh, look well, at that. Well. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> mm. Is that delicious? That's amazing. <laughs> That sweetness from the tomato the sauce. Tomatoes, mm -hmm. that, the tomatoes. The crunchiness you, is really good. Oh, really good. And it holds up. And now you know how to make it. Yeah. It's like, you know, we'd like to give you put one, you know, one teaspoon of this and this and that. We want you to experiment. We want you to take food and just, you know how your grandmother would yeah. just touch it? And it would just like, what's the recipe here? Yeah, yeah Do this, I don't know. You know yeah, that's right. how I cook it <laughs> Just throw it's some like, things in there. Yeah. And that's what we want you to feel comfortable. Right. Just going to the garden, bringing it in, and putting something together. And be creative. And, and it's, the, it's the, the palate being educated from what's around us. Definitely. And the sweetness. And when it's fresh and vibrant mm. and alive, you can taste the sugar, but you have to stop eating sugar. Right. You have to stop drinking juice. You have to yeah. stop the sports drinks and mm -hmm. all of that junk. And if you're gonna have something sweet, have it be amazing and small. You know, yeah. just like the Less best. Less is more, right? Less <laughs> is more. And let food be your medicine. Yes, absolutely. And friendship and pick up a friend. Yes. Like we did. Yeah, thank we you. We picked up <laughs> friends right here. Pick up a friend. Pick up a friend. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, thank I'm so you. proud okay. of you. I'm so proud of you. Thank, thank you for making amazing uh, meals. And then oh, we got some so cauliflower, yes, a yes. ton of veggies. And this is how we bridge it. And that's yeah. what you said to me. Yeah. Because when we can talk about what makes this feel good, then mm. we can feel good together. Yeah. Because we've just gotten a common language. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Common language. So next it. week, make sure you put it on your calendar. Dr. Robert Lustig is going to be here. He is going to be talking about a couple of his books. Metabolical, what our, um, what our industry, yes, what the food industry and the pharmaceutical industry, how much money they're making off of us. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, here we go. Metabolic. Go, yeah. So we're just going to show them. Beautiful. Show you. Yes. The I'll Vanna. Vanna White. Vanna. I'll do my Vanna White here. <laughs> anyway, remember, you can grow anything in buckets in the backyard. Go to your oh. farmer's market. Yeah. Share with a friend. Get people together and make yeah, things. Absolutely. And, you know, and, and lower the sugar and the processed food we give our, our children, especially our, you know, for me, my grandchildren. Okay, thanks so much. We'll see you next week. Thank you, Rose. Hi, thank thanks for being you. here. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. <laughs> and we'll see you next time. All right. Okay.